This is a lock that Alex Ab sent to me about three weeks ago, and I've just been trying to impression it. I had, in fact, I made two attempts to impression it, both without success. And I was going to give up for the night, but uh, uh, when I impressioned the last key, I looked out the door and I saw one of the boys eating out of the garbage can, so I threw the other key at him. Didn't hit him, but he screamed. And then all the little beggars in the neighborhood showed up with BB guns and paintball guns, and so I think they're still out there waiting for me. So I thought I would move this to the next level while I tried to wait them out. Anyway, because the impressioning didn't work, um, I, there's probably something wrong. I was unable to pick this. It's a herd, let's see, about a 40 millimeter. It's an old lock. It's kind of neat. And uh, it's a, it was a U.S. Navy issue, brass shackle and body. Uh, a lot of people have tried to pick this. You can see it's got quite a worn keyway. It's kind of difficult to get a tension wrench in and people have kind of mangled it a little bit. But nevertheless, it was a piece of history and I really did hope to hope to try to restore it. But I got nothing on two uh, impression attempts, each of them about 30 minutes long. So no luck whatsoever. So there's really not a lot of hope for this lock and I really am curious as to why it refuses to take a good impression. Uh, so, because Alex was unable to pick it and I was unable to pick it, let's go ahead and put this thing on the milling machine. Let's open it up and maybe we can learn something from this old lock. Okay, I think this might work. Here we are, we got the, the lock. What we want to do first is we look into the keyway and we notice which sides the pins are on. Uh, ideally, we'll get these pins out first. Maybe we can figure out what's wrong with the pins and stop there. So we look on the side with the pins, and as you see, they're on the top, which means if we go to the side of the lock body and machine this off, we should go down and remove those plugs. We're probably going to destroy the springs, but that's okay. Once we've got access to the holes, then we can take all the pins out and give them a little bit of analysis. So let's just go ahead and clamp this up. Trying to work around the camera here. Okay, and we're just going to align our bit. Okay, I've tightened things down just a little bit and I've put in a brand new bit, so maybe it won't get quite as much chatter as we were a second ago. Let's try this again. Okay, one of our move this up a little bit. You can see one of the plugs popped out, so we're going to go just a little bit deeper. Okay, we machined off the side of this little herd lock, and now uh, there's some burrs on the inside of the five holes. So what we need to do is chamfer it so that those pins uh, can escape from those holes. So in order to do that, uh, just use an electric drill, and we can get this to focus. It's just a chamfer, and if you don't have a chamfer, you can use a regular drill bit to just to put a little round off the edges. And there we go. Just kind of rounds them off and now those springs and everything can come out without any obstructions. Okay, I think that's our last one. Okay, we mangled all the springs. It looks like we, have, we do have five pins as we suspected. And they are all standard. We get our camera to cooperate here. They're all standard pins, nothing spectacular, which leads me to question why was this thing so hard to pick and why was I unable to impression it? So that means we're going to have to go just a little bit further. Let's see if, make sure all the pins are out. Um, let's try it, just try it. And there we go. 
Well, this kind of confirms. This thing's been around a while, hasn't been open for a while. It also tells me somebody cleaned this lock up, and, but they couldn't reach the part that was inside of it. So it has not been unlocked or picked for God knows how long. But let's keep looking. Let's open up the front of this. Let's try to extract the core and figure out if maybe the uh, core, maybe we got some counter milling or some other trickology in there. So let's put it back on the milling machine. Okay, the first thing we're going to try to do is remove this core. So what we need to do is cut a groove on the left side of the core and on the right side of the core so that we can simply lift it out. Once we've done that, then we'll machine down on this side to expose uh, uh, where all, all the pins go, all the grooves. And, so, and then we'll also, during the process, also expose the locking mechanism on the top. I'm not making a cutaway, we're just doing a forensic analysis. Okay, I'm just going to run the lathe for a second. I can't eliminate all the vibration, and I know it's probably irritating, so I'll show you what I'm doing, and then once I've started, I'll turn the camera off and then restart at each stage. Sorry, the vibration, I mean, the camera's getting ready to fall over, so we'll start again at the next stage when I get the core out. Okay, we got the front of it machined off. We don't have the core out yet, but we see two interesting things already. First, we see a pin here that holds the hasp in it. You can see the groove in the hasp, and there's the pin that locks it in place. And so I'll drive that pin out. They're not visible from the other side, but I think when we hit them with a punch, they're probably that one will come out. And the other pin is the one that fits into this groove in the core itself. If we can drive that pin out the other side, then of course uh, this entire core and the locking mechanism will then fall out of the bottom. So let me tr lock this up in the vise and let me try to knock both of those pins out. Okay, we were partially successful. The one on the hasp, I couldn't, it wouldn't drive out the other side, so I simply drilled it. And now, of course, the hasp comes out. So I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried about getting the core out because all the interesting stuff is going to be over here. That pin did begin to drive out, so I hit it with a punch. It started to come out the other side. And hopefully I can grab it with these pliers. Get some bigger pliers. And there's the pin. And now this core should... You know, should pop out. There may be some metal burrs in there stopping it, but with a little application of force, I may need to put this in the vise again. I may be able to get this out, but anyway, before we get too much further and destroy it, uh, of course there are no pins in it, but you can see how this works. We turn the key and the mechanism on the top will then retract on this side. And of course there's one on the other side as well. And when they retract, of course the hasp comes open. So, But we're going to take a closer look at that. Right now I'm going to focus on getting this core out of here. So give me a second. I may have to apply some, some fo more force with a hammer. Okay, we got it clamped up. I'm going to try to work around the camera. I'm just going to put a punch on the back of the plug and just give it a couple of taps. And without that pin holding everything in place, it looks like that core is now just going to pop right out of there. And what I'm looking for is counter milling to explain my inability to pick this. And I don't see any, but if you give me a minute, I can put some on there so it'll look like it was supposed to be really hard. Anyway, there we go. Let's, let's continue taking this thing apart. Okay, we've chucked this thing up back up in the... Uh, in the milling machine. What we're going to do now, I'm just going to mill the entire body in half. And when I do that, it'll expose all the openings, it'll expose all the places where the pins, uh, the upper pins go, and it'll also expose the locking mechanism channel. And we'll be able to kind of reassemble this thing and see how it works. So here we go. I got the camera rigged up a little bit differently now.
Okay, not a whole lot to it, I suppose. Uh, we got it mil uh, milled in half. You can see where the five pins went. They're not in right now because it was too hard to hold up. They kept falling out. And also missing is the spring that holds, that pushes the hasp up. But again, it kept falling apart So when I tried to demonstrate it. But I think you can see how this works. Uh, put the key in there. And again, I'm going to put my thumb right here to keep everything from falling apart. When we turn the key, it retracts that hasp from the top, the locking pawl. And of course it just fell out, but then of course that allows the hasp to come out. So now, why could I not pick it? I can't answer your question. It probably is due to my own picking incompetence would be my bet, or my own stupidity perhaps, but I see no reason why I should not have been able, or Alex or anybody else should have been able to pick this thing. It's only got five pins. There's nothing special about any of them. There's no reason we shouldn't have been able to pick this other than perhaps Maybe it, had, it was um, machined with a lot tighter tolerances than what any of us anticipated and took a lot more picking precision than we were giving it. But anyway, that's no excuse. We, it looks like we destroyed a nice old U U.S. Navy lock. And other than learning how the insides work, uh, we didn't really learn why we couldn't pick it. By the way, this only has one locking hasp. You'll notice when they drilled this channel through the side of the body, they stopped right here. So. In that regard, we only had one locking hasp, and, but it was machined with such tight, tight tolerances, we couldn't have got a shim in there anyway, so I guess that really didn't matter. The last thing I want to know, of course, is how close was I when I impressioned it. So, the other key, those kids are still waiting for me outside. Looks like now they got BB guns and paintball guns. They've gathered like zombies out there, but anyway... Uh, I'm going to have to find some other stalling technique, but it looks like I had gotten a little impatient here as well. So in addition to getting impatient with uh, machining this fine old lock open, I probably stopped impressioning a little bit sooner uh, than I should have. You can see pin number five uh, and number one, I should have gone just a bit more, and I think it might have impressioned. But that might have been a little hard to do. Again, I don't know if you can make out the bidding here. I mean, I was literally near the bottom here, so I guess I could have gone just a little bit deeper on both of those, and perhaps it would have impressioned. The problem was I wasn't getting any markings at all, nothing. So it made it difficult to figure out where to file. But anyway, I'm just full of excuses today. So there you go. We ruined the lock, uh, wasted a lot of time, and uh, thanks for your time. Everybody stay safe, stay legal.